Gentleman No Class is proud to be a part of the HC Universal Network. Gentleman No Class is produced, mixed, and edited by M5 Studios. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash gents no class. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. This podcast contains explicit language and is intended for adult audiences. The views and opinions of gentlemen no class are strictly for comedic purposes and should not be taken literally. <clears throat> for instance, like this disclaimer. Now grab yourself a pint and enjoy. Welcome to another episode of Gentleman No Class, a podcast that when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. I'm Jake. I am Paul. And I'm Rob. And like it or not, gentle ladies and gentlemen, we are the hosts. Yes, we fucking are. And... Uh you know, without having the shock mounts on the mic because we were being lazy, you really do hear everything get set down. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's winning out, fuckers? <laughs> yeah. yeah all right, yeah, fine. Baby. Oh, well. You uh, you win some, you lose some. Can it all be winners, all yeah. right? Yeah. So what's yeah. up, guys? I know we are um, delayed a week on this episode. And whose fault is that? Because 100% my fault. Because someone had to I be born. Um, and uh, there was a birthday that was celebrated, which I did well, not get an invite to. <laughs> There was no birthday celebrated on podcast day. My, 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 I'm sorry. My mother wanted to come over and have dinner. So uh, Rob's that's a celebration. 59th birthday for the third time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Right. I'm on the downhill slope towards 40 now. So, yeah. yeah. Got <laughs> closer to 40 than 30. Oh. How do you sleep? <laughs> Painfully, God damn, these man. old bones. God <laughs> damn, yeah, Rob. Yeah. 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 Well, so yes, well we happy have... belated birthday. I know. I, I, I wished you happy birthday. Well, well, happy belated birthday. Uh, I don't you know. Think, I don't I think gotta, I feel like uh, saying it myself. Okay. But yeah, I guess I have to. You're right next to me. You can hurt me, but I'm not going to hurt you. Not on air. Uh, good. <laughs> we we'll give you private. So about this. we had a lot. I mean, we've been bouncing ideas back and forth of what's going on. Like we haven't had like a real like kickback. No. You know, uh, no agenda podcast in a while, and those are the ones that we really like because we always. End well, up- we kind of did that last time too, in a way, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Well, did we? Yes, we felt did. like it. Oh, yeah, but either did. way, I think we produce some pretty good shit when we do that. I, I know those are my favorite shittings. It, it's, it's it's our nature. Form, it's our, a, yeah, we can do we that. We're definitely good at it. That's Fuck for yeah, sure. I could do that alone too. You know that. You guys are so no egotistical. Hands. I don't think you guys are good at it. <laughs> what? And that's being the truth, truthfully honest. You have a notebook. I don't. I do have a notebook, and that's for today's current <laughs> events, guys. Oh yeah, bring us <laughs> some current events. So um, I watched it. I don't know if you guys watched it. Go on. The whole Leaving Neverland oh, documentary that's wait, on HBO. Wait, wait, you watched the whole thing? I did. Okay, too. I only watched half of it. I'm sorry. I only. Uh-huh. That's, all, that's all I needed to watch. Who to suffered honest. most? I did. Not those kids. I watched those fucking. I watched the documentary. <laughs> I suffered too. I I did not watch it. I I don't I don't care to watch it. <laughs> Well, yeah. why? I'm just curious. Yeah, sure. Why? A uh, couple of reasons. Does One, it... I don't fucking care. Mm-hmm. Um, two, sensitive. I don't care either. Even more. Okay, than so that, that doesn't really so bother you. It, it doesn't affect me at all. It like I, it doesn't. You. I feel like the like document. The wall. the wall doesn't affect you. I didn't ever watch <laughs> <laughs> Pink Floyd's The Wall. That was a great movie. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it's not. I don't. My opinion of Michael Jackson is solely related to his music and not his personal, not his personal life at yeah. all. Yeah, right. So I don't really care what he did in his personal life. Do I think that he was a fucking weirdo? Yeah, I do think he was a fucking weirdo. But mm-hmm. I mean, I, if if there was enough evidence to convict him of any kind of crime, it would have been done by now. And whatever right. whatever happens in that thing just goes to show you how fucked up you know people are and how fucked up he was and it it's just it just perpetuates that it just it it, it pulls the shade back on something we already all knew and mm-hmm. I, I don't need the gory details you know what i mean right yeah it got graphic at times but unfortunately you know michael was just a product of his father just took his child away and you know produced a great fucking musician out of him but my god it fucking warped his mind to, uh, beyond where where you say rob he's creepy it seems creepy there's a lot of mystery behind him and that's what like really at least 
got me wanting to watch the documentary. I was just curious on that because we're all curious, and he's a you know he, the guy was a mystery. Besides what we know and we don't know, right. and that's what really I, you know is sparking a lot of um, you know craze. And like I I, I mm. don't think that they should be disbarring all his music from all the radio stations. It's like, well, if you don't like it, just don't fucking listen to it. It's the same thing. Like, his, right. I, I don't know. It's, just, it's gone a little too far. Then they pulled a Simpsons episode, Stark Raving Dad, which is funny. Ironically, for years, they denied he was never on the show. He was never credited. The only one they credited is John J. Smith. That's supposed, that's the guest star, but, you know, mm. it's 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 really Michael Jackson. But they pulled that out of syndication, and supposedly they were pulling out of, like, digital... Media too, which I think is bullshit. Yeah, I better well, get my three dollars. I better get my three dollars credit back. I, 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 bought I, that I, episode. I think it's like simple. It's like if you don't like, well, if you don't. Think, if you think he's a monster or whatever, you don't have to listen to his music or anything related with him involved. It's just like Rob yeah, said. Don't that, go to court and be a character witness for him. But I mean, Jesus, who cares? I you just, know I, mean? I think that's fucking ridiculous. Do, it's, do, it's do, just the times that we live in. Yeah, like, I mean, like I, I Daniel I Tosh says, you know, like Michael Jackson just goes to prove that you can beat somebody into greatness. You know, God damn it! <laughs> Get the damn. <laughs> you never what? heard that bit where he talks about Joe Jackson proves that you can beat your oh, kid yeah. into greatness. Well, basically, yeah. I mean, he goes because you don't want to beat somebody. You don't want to beat the kid bad enough where you end up with a serial killer, but you do want to be or <laughs> where he becomes level. a child molester. But yeah. you do want to beat, him, beat him where you get the creative right. creative angst to produce a thriller album. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's a, that's what it is. He's yeah. a fucking by, a product of that fucked up upbringing his dad did. Well, the it's, Jackson Estate is actually suing HBO, really, uh, and denouncing the whole documentary. Um, but you that's know, that's fine. They're not going to win that. Yeah, but you know, it's good that we have our own opinions about the situation because you know Corey Feldman back in like when Stan Lee died, there was an event and he was there and he was asked what he thought about you know the making of the documentary and he had reserved feelings about it, but he also said that uh, that's a little late in the game to bring that shit up. I mean, the guy's dead, right? It doesn't feel right. Um, he didn't think he did it. Well, um, I thought that. I don't mean to interrupt you. I thought I thought he was calling certain no, people me, out. That let me finish. Okay, that was back in sorry. January. Today, he he came out and he said it pretty much. He kind of regret. It, it, it sounded like he regret what he said, and he's yeah. kind of going against like, well, I'm not defending the guy. I'm not defending. I, in fact, I'm with all the the, the the victims, you know, and I understand where they're coming from. But it didn't happen to me. So he has no opinion about it, pretty much. Yeah. So I thought oh, okay. that I thought that he came out and said that he can't defend Michael anymore. He said that today. Yes. Yeah. He did say that like, today. He but went, back he in went, January. He kind of was like, "This is not the guy," and he was like, "You know, there's no there's no reason for them to have the documentary." It seemed like he was defending him then, and that's oh, what people okay. are making a big deal about. You're defending him then, back in January, but now when this documentary and all this uproar, um, all these fans are criticizing Michael Jackson to help, and then all these stations. Are, are are taking away his albums, his songs, and yeah. The Simpsons, and all that. Stuff. Yeah, he comes out today saying that why well, cannot defend can, the guy? Look, like that, they so. can do whatever oh. they want. Yeah. They're not going to pull the the cultural significance mm-hmm. and impact that Michael Jackson had on our society, because like it or not, like we were having a discussion earlier about this. You know, if you compare the situation to something nowadays, you're like, oh yeah, what if you were hanging out with Justin Timberlake and like you were hanging out over at his house and you know. He was like, oh, yeah, just leave your kid here to spend the night. You know, like, we're going to have fun in the morning and stuff like that. You can come pick him up. You know, now, Paul made a good point. He was like, now. Because we're conditioned. Because we're, we're conditioned to think that that's creepy. And, like, but, you know, back then, before, the like, all these allegations started coming forward about Michael Jackson in the 90s, you know, people never thought anything of it. You know, yeah. he was... He was this very generous person who gave to all these children's charities, surrounded himself with children, right, right. did all these great things. Now, did not think of it, or did they were like, you know what, the guy's helping they me pay the, my mortgage? They looked the other way. Yeah, exactly. What, the, the parents of the children looked the other like, way, which is it, yeah. It's ridiculous. In a documentary, it shows them it's like either you're oblivious to it or you know it, or that's how manipulative he was. Because according to you know the children that got it worse, they were man- manipulated too. According to them, there's really no hard proof. It's just their story. I hear them out. I believe them, but you don't have no proof, though. So that's just, I mean, right. that's yeah. that's what it is. You can't, it's not enough. You know, he's dead either way, but you, there's not enough. There is an actual hard evidence to where it points out, yeah, he is a, um, you know, he, he molested and abused these kids. 
So right. that's that's my take on it. I'm kind of mixed well, he, about he, it. Ever, there was evidence at one point back in like in 2000, I guess one, whenever he went to trial and stuff. But what was the they evidence? Could, they couldn't you persuade the tr- couldn't persuade the jury, and he 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 walked away a free man. Yeah. So I don't know. If these people yeah, are they, involved, I don't know anything about that. I just know that this has been an ongoing deal since the early yeah. 90s. Well, so, you know, the thing, too, I didn't really look at this as much because I remember because, like, there's other – the other accusations when they settle out of court. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, Honestly, it, like, what do you – what, like, as far as, like, guilty – It just means – Does it make them it, look bad? Well, it just means – so, like, you can drop the charges. So, basically, like, Michael Jackson's estate or his attorneys or whatever paid those people – they settled out of court. They're like, look, here's X amount of dollars. You sign this paper. You never mention this again. We're yeah. not admitting guilt, but we like this. If this keeps going, people are going to start forming their own opinion about things. And, right. You know, okay. Blah, so blah, blah, no matter blah. what, it's like he's, he's probably, let's just say hypothetically, he is innocent. But the fact that they're creating this hysteria, it's going it, it, to, it's, it's defamation or it's, it's, it's just it's it, close it, enough to it's, it. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, his image, his identity is right. being um, tarnished. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I understand why they would do that. That's what I'm trying to say. Is like, well, didn't, wouldn't that make him feel seem like okay? That right there, he's guilty. He paid him off. But that would no, make, that would make sense though. But, they, like, the but basic, I'm trying to say, yeah. like, why would you? Do, I would do that too. Is like, you know, you put your fucking trash in my name. You have no proof. But everybody's the court of public to it. opinion. Right. Is, yes, exactly. Is, is always public gonna... court. Exactly. And immediately, like, no matter what. We don't need any evidence. They just said it right there. Exactly. That's good enough. So Fuck you. It looks like this is probably the direction that we're going with. You know, with this documentary that came out, people are making a big uproar about it. It's gained attention. Now, have y'all seen the R. Kelly interview? No. No, I have I was, not. Actually, oh, I was going to start watching it earlier, too, but that's a, I think that's a six-hour part two or it's like a six parts well, I, just saw I don't know if it's 30 part. minutes or an hour but I yeah, that's a long interview there's a it. lot of evidence against them no 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 yeah no there's a lot of uh, evidence the guy's going to be facing pretty much the rest of his life in prison um yeah. but gail king from cbs did an interview with r kelly and did he admit guy, any wrongdoing no or no he denied everything with a stone cold face man and um he flipped out though and he looked at the camera like, oh, which camera? Yeah. Which yeah. camera is yeah, that? And he, and he just fucking unleashed the, the the real R. Kelly. It felt like you know all these emotions, but he snapped. And you know, I gotta uh, you know commend Gail King. You know, she just like just stared, held her composure, and was like, Robert, 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 like calm down. And his producer came in and was like, dude, calm down, calm down. And he sat down and he collected his thoughts. And but this guy for a, sp- a minute or two <laughs> exposed who this guy really is. And it's like, he just flipped a switch. And um, now, when I see things like that, and it's just speaking for myself, when I see, like, because I, I YouTube, like, you know, when prisoners go to court and they get convicted and I see, like, their reaction. Like, that's kind of, for, for me, it's kind of therapeutic because it's like you're seeing somewhat of a death penalty without the death. This guy's fucked up. He's sorry, but he really is sorry that he got caught. And yeah, that's the difference. That's a difference. But you see their reaction. And like, there's a hint of sorrow that I feel for the guy, for the monster. But I mean, it's like you feel sorry. You feel sorry for the guy because he couldn't control his own monsters. Exactly, yeah. man. And you feel bad, and you really feel bad for the victims that. Well, that, well yes, that, I'm that, always. That, yeah. You know what I mean? I feel bad for the victims, but I'm just like like this guy. I feel sorry like, for that girl that R. Kelly pissed uh, on. That's right, exactly. Yeah. But what I'm just trying to say is like this guy is going to spend the rest of his life in prison, and it's like humans are capable of doing what this guy did and yeah. that's what's kind of scary there like, are humans out there doing way worse than yeah. obviously like well, the chris like watts a, guy from colorado that's a whole different story yeah it's like rob said controlling the monsters and stuff like mm-hmm. that michael jackson i feel the same way for him i feel bad for him but he knew what he was doing if, if, if that is true you know according to those guys but it's just just a, it just the caveat to that though mind. is why now like did the money run out or something? Like I don't get it. I mean, why come out right now? That's what some of the people, ten years after the guy died. I haven't looked into it, but some of the people were saying, "Yeah, I don't know what the le- maybe." Well, well see, the they thing signed is an too, NDA and like right that like if the money like uh, they may sense. they may have been like you know sense. what fuck it may, yeah, you know okay, what I mean yeah. like I, I I can make because like it's basically it be like that. This. So it, it's if the if Michael Jackson's estate agreed to pay them two hundred thousand dollars a year to be silent. And they're like, okay, it's been 20 years. You know, I don't know that that money is going to make it. You know, I've had, I have all this money in the bank. I'm living a decent life. This stuff needs to come out. There's enough of us. 
I think that this documentary will make millions of dollars. I can make more selling my story mm-hmm. than the NDA was paying me to be quiet. You break the NDA. Yeah. With the breach of contract. Well, I mean, that, that's, I mean, that's yeah. a possibility. It depends too, on what the... I, I really do think the main one uh, was, is Wade. I forgot his last Ro- name. Robson. Ro- Robson. Ro- Robson. Well, yeah. I think it just he Rob. came to a breaking point in his life. It said in a documentary that he just couldn't, you know, because he didn't, couldn't talk to anybody about this. This kind of trauma is like he didn't know who to talk to him about this. He didn't tell anybody. He gets it to himself. Like, that's going to fuck you yeah. up in the head. You know, yeah. that really It's a mental happen. deal. You know, I cannot so, vouch for how, being in that right, position. And to hold back and not to tell anybody yeah, and not yeah. be, and to not be able to, the, the, the um, to have to have somebody else to empathize your your situation yeah. and know what you're Besides going through is very difficult. Like, and you're literally you literally feel alone in the I world. Know, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and for him to like finally break out, like when he finally just told his wife, and yeah. or no, he went to go see a therapist, I believe, and then that was the first time he just opened up about it, and from there just. Yeah, and, and that's a valid point. You know, it has to be a riveting I, that's a feeling if, to unleash that all that weight. Yeah, because that uh, that'll fucking kill you. That'll destroy yeah. you. Two of the fathers committed suicide. Yeah, I mean, it's like <laughs> of the of the victims. It, you know, it's it's, it, it's the emotional tax and the emotional burden of it. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes far outweigh the amount of money that you know. Money's not everything. You can't no fuck no. You know what I mean? They'll like, never solve it. Like whatever, especially uh, men- mentally. Uh, uh, what's go the, well? Depression, heavy depression, or, or you know, uh, that kind of abuse at, at, a, at a young age. Oh, and yeah, just not for, understanding for sure. that. No money. It's like it's, it's all therapeutic. And, you and let feeling it out. like your parents like let it happen. I mean, yeah. the kids yeah. probably have. Lots oh yeah, of destroyed ex- families, oh, yeah. especially the Wade, Wade's family. They got destroyed because of that. You so, know, yeah. but yeah, it's 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 sad and it's 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 a pretty graphic documentary if you're gonna watch it. Just forewarned just, yeah but. so just yeah I, I'll, I'll i i don't know that i'm gonna partake in it but i'm glad we're just make sure you have some whiskey with you i think you'll get through it <laughs> yeah. so uh shifting gears a little bit um mm-hmm. there was uh, a story in the news a couple weeks ago i think it happened in between podcasts um this guy jesse smollett from mm. uh, empire yeah 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 <laughs> uh he alleged <laughs> so he alleged that uh he was walking to go find a subway sandwich shop at 2 a.m in chicago and was Gotta attacked by, by two men shouting uh homophobic and racial slurs that they and wearing uh maga hats you know make america great hats and they put a noose around his neck and um he's <laughs> you know all, all this other stuff and it was a huge hate crime thing, you know, and then the story started unraveling as Chicago PD started really investigating what had happened. And, uh, you know, they really didn't take his story at face value, right? Um, which good police work, you know, they actually did their job and, and found out that <laughs> one of the guys, it was, he had hired his trainer to, to stage the attack or allegedly, I should say allegedly. So uh, today uh, he was indicted on sixteen counts. Oh shit! Oh, uh, felony counts in the uh, the hoax case. So oh. he was. I think he was fired from Empire. Right. Right. Um, so this is. Uh, and the intentions were because he felt like he wasn't being paid enough money on that show, is what I had heard, and so he staged this attack to try to draw more attention to himself. <laughs> Uh, that maybe bolster a raise because he's he and, and 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 he is a uh, he is a black gay man, you know, and trying to make it in the entertainment industry. He had I mean Using I guess a decent show, but I mean I feel like that's, that's just I fucking, feel like geez. as you know <laughs> your fucking merits, buddy. That's well, accounts. Well, here, here's 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 me coming as you know a straight white male in a country that was built for me, America. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, Yards. I mean, honestly, you know, yeah. um, you got it wrong. It built for there's, me. There's, there, there, there's a lot of struggle for pe- for people of color and minorities in this country, and I feel like, you know, I, I that guy, I feel like, may took a major step back yeah. for people that that actually shit like that actually yeah. happens to. Well, you, you know, know what I mean. Well, see, and, that's the and, thing. And, and, and there are assholes yeah, right. that are one sided and ignorant that will do dumb shit like that yeah. to people. And I feel like this guy just set the spat you know, on them. Well, see, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, I, you know I don't what I mean? Think, exactly. Like, I'm, when I'm people with you on say that. like it sets them back, I was like, no, man, we should all know and acknowledge like. 
he's a dumbass. He just happens to be black and gay. That has nothing to do with their fight and their struggle. Fuck that. Just well, not, I, I he's gr- an idiot. Like, I'm just saying, like, it shouldn't matter. Like, that that guy does not represent all the gays and all the black people. Well, that's I what, agree, but... That's what, the point I'm trying to get when it, like... It's right. just, he's just an idiot. Just I get like that. But some, what, some I, what I'm are. saying is, is, like, if that were to happen, knowing that that happened, if that were to happen again, do you think that the Chicago police... Let's say it happens in the same neighborhood... Do you think the Chicago okay, police take mean. that report seriously? I see what you mean because you get gonna, what I'm they're saying. Gonna, yeah, they're already there. It's already happened once. Yeah, and, and it was a fraud. Back, because you know what it, I mean? yeah, it did have. Okay, it's in her mind already. Right. Conditioning. That's there what. That's what. That's what that the step backwards is. Okay. Okay. You know I what I mean? It's it's not the fact that like he's screwing right. up civil rights for all these people. No, that right, has right. nothing. That has okay very little to do that, with it. The the fact that it is is that he has ruined the credibility. Fool me once, shame on okay. you. Fool me twice. Exactly. Right, right. Shame on he's, right. me. He's, okay. he's so putting that Another doubt. gay black actor could be an actual Jeopardy in, in a crisis. No, I, I think that it's any... Maybe... any it, I don't think you, you, you narrow it down to a gay black <laughs> actor. It could be any person of color com- or, you know reporting a hate crime of any kind yeah and you know what i mean because now there is that speck of you know doubt and right, and that's right. that that seed of doubt gets sowed and that's what causes you know like when you when a jury convicts uh, a murderer it has to be a unanimous jury decision for a death penalty sentence you know right, what i mean right. one or or to to convict so right. one like just like in the movie 12 angry men the book you know i don't know if you ever read it but uh, you know, you have to, you know, believe that beyond a reasonable doubt that they're guilty, that one speck of doubt, if you doubt it at all, they're not guilty. You know what I mean? Like that you have to believe beyond a reasonable doubt. And that's subjective though, right? Because it is subjective because you could be in the South and it could be a, a, a race, uh, case, right? Yeah. Right. Racial case. Which is exactly what 12 angry, like this. Oh, that's what it's about. Well, it's, it's not. Yeah. No, I mean, that's more. Is that to kill a mockingbird? Peck, right? Yeah. No, no, that's to kill a mockingbird. Oh, he played Atticus Finch. I think. I know they're wrong. Have you ever seen like a time to movie, kill though. with, uh, Oliver Platt, uh, Matthew McConaughey. That's oh, in the Morgan South. Freeman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. Samuel, <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. Jackson. Oh yeah. Samuel Just Jackson. Just because yeah. he's black. He's not in every fucking movie. Like Samuel L. Jackson's yes, black in every movie. Yes, I think movie. they deserve <laughs> to die. I hope they burn in hell. Exactly. That one. That's in the yeah. South. Yeah. And they have to convict this guy, 12 white people that are on the jury. Yeah. And, right. And, and that's kind of, you know, the, the short story, 12 angry men is, is, it's kind of along those lines, you know. It's a boy who's being convicted of murdering, I think, his father or something like that. And all the jurors are like, "He's a punk kid. He did it. Let's go home." And one of the jurors is like, "I don't know. I'm just not buying all this evidence. Like, I feel like they're they're leading things on, you know." And and that one juror in the in the course of the story talks with the other jurors and talks reasonable doubt into them and and says. If I say, you know, like, you know, like there was one of the things that they said was they heard the kid yelling at the father, you know, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, well, it's said in the heat of anger. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to go get a gun or a knife and stab him. Right. You know what I mean? Good and point. so the guy, the the antagonist in the story or the protagonist in the story, like he antagonizes one of the other, you know, red blooded jurors, you know, kind of hot headed jurors into basically the same situation. Interesting. And he's like, are you really going to kill me? You just said you were. That's basically what you're saying, why he's guilty. And he changes that guy's mind. You know what I mean? It's that it's that seed of reasonable doubt. Yeah. And that's what Jesse Smollett has taken away from people that, you know, are just now getting to the point in this country where they can report a hate crime and be taken seriously. It, it's it, it's they're flipping that page back two or three pages. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's just it made national headline news and it, it's it's just an all around bad deal. I that's mean, for for everybody involved, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that was rational thinking. You shouldn't have yeah, done that. You shouldn't have done that. It, what, yeah, I agree. What else you got on current events? Bad, so, bad, bad, man. You got, anybody got anything? I got um. You so got there's it. been an online petition for net, uh, you know, for fans to pitch the idea to Netflix. To get them to is make this that bullshit fucking email I got earlier today. Uh, what email did you get? Let him finish. 
I don't know what email you got. But it's the, the, the Armory Wars. <sighs> yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah, yeah, that's right. It's because you don't know anything about the Armory Wars. I signed before, it. Armory Wars. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, Fuck so I read the graphic novels. Did you? Yeah. Uh, I don't believe. I that. read parts of it on Wikipedia. <laughs> did you really lose yeah, it? I yeah. Read parts of it on Wikipedia also. It's interesting though. I got all. I, it's I got a cool story. I, I signed the petition, but I still thank think you, man. It's thank you, man. No, I don't think it'll make it. Mark Wahlberg bought the rights or something. Yeah, Mark wants to join in on it. Years ago. Years ago. We met Claudio at the Chicago Comic Con. And he yeah. and talks about it. Okay. But, um, that'll be nice. They want to make a movie or a series, mini series. That'd be badass. Um, Pair it with the fucking soundtrack. Like Jesus. they did with Doom. So like, do, like, do like a big mini series, like a, you know, a couple of hours each show. Right. You know, like, oh, yeah. Nice which, which show? Dune. Dune. You remember that the Dune movie? Back? Yeah. David Lynch directed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. David Lynch. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if you guys don't know what the Army Wars is, it's like it's, it's uh, Claudine, uh, Coheed and Cambria. The uh, band. The band. Claudio wrote this story and turned into a comic. And the story goes intertwined with the, for, I think it's the first three albums. Yeah. Um, Claudio Sanchez. Well, yeah. 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 Coheed and, Coheed and Cambry are the main, the main antagonists. Ma- exactly. Of, They're the main uh, uh, protagonists of there you go. Uh, story. The graphic novels. Yeah. Uh, They're two. Yeah. Two people, Romeo and Juliet esque. Esque, yeah. Claudio is it's the one like the main character trying Don't to pretty much know. save the universe, in a sense. But uh, it goes with the second stage turbine blade and keeping the secret of Silent Earth three and the good Apollo album. So um, those are all out. So those comics, I yeah. definitely recommend picking up the graphic novels or whatnot. But it's a it's the story is kind of off end. But if you're a big Coheed and Cambria fan, definitely check them out. Yeah. And if they make this into a a mini series. That'll be sexy. I mean, um, if you're a fan alone, and if yeah. you're well, if you like progressive rock, check them out. They're really great. It's just overall good storytelling. And it's just amazing uh, the coincide a, a comic book line with the music. That's just that's badass. That's the wide imagination. <laughs> they, he did, they put a lot of effort, or Claudio definitely puts a lot of effort into Claudio the is is a very um, the way his mind works and stuff like that. I've read a couple of interviews and in you know. Mm-hmm. It, it's just super impressive. I mean, to write those no, those graphic novels, whatever you want to call them, comic books or whatever, right. as well written as they were, the storylines were really well thought out and things like that. And then to turn those into conceptual albums to accompany yep. those, I mean, that's brilliance. I mean, yeah. there's no other way to 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 put that. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they're 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 definitely one of a kind. They're fucking. They're still kicking ass from like I don't know what. 20 years have been around almost? Yeah, pretty much. I think, well, no, 2001 is when uh, Second Stage Turbine came out, right? That's ah, a, man, I don't know. I'm not that's good a Taylor with, Peak question. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not good with uh, years, but I mean, I know that they I needed, yeah. they, 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 they uh, requested 25,000 signatures, and as of today, March 8th, it's at 19,000. Oh. So okay. we're well, the petition that I signed right before y'all got here only had 6,000, so... There may be multiple petitions going on. Oh, around. shit. Yeah, maybe. Hmm, interesting. Sign the same one, guys. Yeah, fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> if that's what it takes, don't sign multiple ones. Oh, just yeah. yeah I got mine from comicbook.com. So go check out comicbook.com. Comicbook.com, you that's say. A, that's a big uh, source for you know pop culture news. It sounds so generic. It is. Yeah. It's like music.com or something. Yeah, yeah. Or, Edging.com. Edging.com you know? or, you know. Jesus Christ. What? We can talk about edging. Um, Coheed and Cambria, years active. They were formed as a band in 1995. Yeah. Yeah, they so, formed as a band. Yeah. That, <laughs> uh, that is quite uh-huh. a long time. So... If you YouTube um, like their first one of the first gigs was gigs, I said gigs, it turned into a rob. <laughs> but no, uh, one of their first shows was at a college, and you can see they're playing um, uh, one of the songs from Second Stage Turn by Blade. I forgot what it was, um, but it's like you can see the transformation. I don't yeah. know. And you know, just like any band, obviously, but I've seen it's, a lot it's, of earlier it's, stuff. It's pretty so what was videos. their first, what was their first album? It should be second, second stage turbine. Blade. Yeah. So that there wasn't an act one Time because consumer, I thought, I thought that they the were, I thought that there was an album supposed to be an album Single. before that, like a number one, because second stage turbine plane would, was two. Yeah. So, and then keeping secrets of silent earth was three, three. and then good Apollo one That's, and two were four. Mm, right. Yeah. I don't know. I was always, yeah, I thought Good um, Apollo on Burning Four you know, I, was I, Volume One, and then what's it called? The double album. I thought that was a yeah, prequel. Good Apollo. No, no, no. It's it's no, 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 no. The the uh, um uh, Ascension and Descension. I believe. Yeah, I that's, that's. I thought that's, that was a prequel. That's after, isn't it? Or uh, is, is that after? is that supposed to be the prequel? I thought that's I what know, it I was before know, all that. That's a Taylor Peak question, like I said. Fuck. I haven't been following the storyline too much. It's been a while. Yeah, so yeah. Good Apollo... I mean, they were labeled, you know, 2, 3, and then Good Apollo was a was two separate albums. Um, you know, Fear Through the Eyes of Madness and mm-hmm. No World for Tomorrow. Those were four. Um, Damn. 
Man, that was a great stuff. I don't know. It's 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 <laughs> it's it's great shit. I mean, didn't their bass player like <laughs> yeah, yeah like break into a pharmacy? Yeah, and, like, no, yeah. You they're trying on, to steal they're, oxy or they're, something. They're on tour. He 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 put his phone out on notes, and he's like, "I have a I have a gun or a bomb. Uh, please give me yeah, like some oxys or some painkillers, or whatever." And uh, he yeah, they gave it to him. No commotion. Went back to the fucking went back to the the show before. Uh, I believe he got arrested before he even played. Um, so they played without a bass player. Yeah, I but think I could him. be wrong. No, I know it was it, it was that night or that because it was before the show they got to him. Yeah, before the show he didn't play that show. I they might have gotten uh, uh, another opening act ba- a bassist to play to fill in. Yeah, um, that that's a tough. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, but they got I mean, if they were looking for a bass player, they could have called me. I'd, yeah, I'd sure. have done the job. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> no. I, don't, yes, uh, I mean, you're on top of the world. I don't get it. I don't yeah. get why people make those stupid decisions. You're on top of the world. Yeah, you know hey, what man, I mean? It's a coping mechanism. It's all it yeah. is. He's trying to cope with what's going on. Fucking. You don't really. Your self awareness is I, gone, I, man. Yeah. I mean, I've been down that route. Yeah. I'm no going one, down no that one route. asked you. I'm, I'm talking about the bass player. <laughs> Fuck yeah, you. Yeah, we're talking about bass players, man. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that where the conversation ends? We're not going to go down. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, where'd you want me to pick it up from? How about you I thought we were going to talk about bass players. Oh, bass players. Okay, Who wants uh, to talk about bass players? You know what I thought about the other day? No, it, it's a bass like, player? As, as, as a musician, it's like, you know, it's like, if somebody says, like, you know, I don't know, they had to, they were forced to play some instrument and they get this response, it's like, well, they make you play. It's like, man, I'd rather play bass. You know, that's fucked up. It is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather play bass, <laughs> but you know, uh, bass. I, I knock bass players, but no, they 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 fucking provide a huge fucking gap, or that you know that nice foundation. That there you go. You said the right word because this Gotta is have this it, is man. this is a bass player <laughs> is the foundation of the band. Just like if you compare it to a house, yeah. So. Yeah. When Marriage. everybody walks into a house, everybody looks at the walls and the furnishings and the architecture. Nobody ever goes, man, you you've got a great this? foundation. Ground. You yeah. know what I mean? Man, this ground is just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, baby. But if it wasn't there, you would definitely notice it. Yeah. You know Big what I mean? Time, yeah. So, For fucking so many years you could, before you came with us, man, it was just, it was so empty. I never realized when we did jam with bass players, like, fuck, man. Like, yeah. you, you that, it's the foundation. Now, what do you say about the house that was built and in like five years you see a fucking crack in the brick? That foundation sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the bass player's Does that useless. Have it, Rob? <laughs> not not useless, just underutilized or not taken care of. Oh, wow. have you guys uh, just shifting topics a little bit here? Have you guys seen uh, that Spider Man animated movie? Yeah. I have Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Verse. Yeah, yeah. was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I thought it was amazing. Like I, I literally, too. I yeah. really, uh, literally applaud I, after I saw that damn. fucking movie. It was, well, it was very, very great. well done. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't that interested at first, but towards the end, yeah, it was. I mean, it was good. I was, I wanted to watch it. Yeah, you wanted to watch the movie. Like yeah. you wanted to finish watching it. Is that? Yeah, I like it. I, I, I like, I like the whole, the whole concept. Uh-huh. The, the movie didn't really follow the comic book version, but mm-hmm. I like the concept of, um, you know. Uh, of the Miles Morales character where that and so in the comic the spider that bites Spider-Man also bit Miles Morales right. but Miles Morales didn't come forward with his powers he kept them hidden and as he saw Spider-Man coming out he knew what he was but he was like he no I, I don't, I'm not that guy mm-hmm. and then I think Doc Ock or the Kingpin kills Spider-Man in the comics and then Miles Morales is like well now the world needs a Spider-Man so he comes out as Spider-Man mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah. he's got a little bit of different powers and, you know, he's, he's, you know I mean? He's the first, uh, le- uh Latin American superhero, you know I mean? Uh, yeah. uh, he's Puerto Rican. <laughs> I'm, I'm a chingus pretty macro. sure he's Puerto Rican. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yay. Right. Woo. You know, but what that made me laugh mean, mean anything was to great. Me. I don't, yeah. I don't care about but that no, shit. What I cared about was how fat his fuck Kingpin, Kingpin was. Like, oh my God. Here, here. Just everywhere, like every scene, like, I was out of breath because I was just you laughing and making fun of him. How like, his head was like literally being held in yeah, his torso. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like, that was pretty it's, funny. <laughs> it felt like you know um, something like you would see off of uh, I don't know what's that like a Pixar film Are that pl- just that just that type of body formation. It's animated, of you, course. You know, but, whenever you're in a play and you see like someone peek their head through the curtains, like all right, guys, you ready? <laughs> That's fucking key, you know. <laughs> you know, Hello but, there, neighbor. Yeah, but I will say this: Leif Schreiber <laughs> yeah. did a great great job mm-hmm, doing yeah. his voice. 
I didn't even know cheeks. that was him, man. I mean, yeah. he did yeah, such it, it a good job. It was really good. Job. I mean, oh, the, the version of Green Goblin that they did at the beginning of that movie that was, was awesome. fucking awesome. They they made Doc Ock uh, a woman. That yeah. was pretty cool. That was a cool little twist. Everything about they it. They had yeah. uh, 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 fucking. I almost said Luke Cage, Nick Cage, uh, Nicholas Cage, yeah, yeah. Uh, Spider Noir. Yeah, that was cool. that was, that was great. Was great yeah. Man. Yeah. there was some great shit. Yeah, in there. even even the animation on this man. I'm like, I'm hoping yeah. DC gravitates to that because if I see a Batman the way they did, because it looked like I was watching a fucking comic book. They had that already. And then Batman the animated series. No, it, it wasn't. No, no. Yeah, it was, no. It was so noir. No. Like, no, 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 I get that. But no, the, come on. It, it was like glitchy. You could totally yeah. see. Like, it looked like the anim- like, well, well, but like it was a, glitchy because no, the universe. No, no, were, no, no. If no, you look not at the movie, that part. I know what he meant. Let me finish here. If you look at the movie, it looks like a flip book, the, an animated flip book, and it's like you can see when the guy's running. Yeah, and, and where there's no glitchiness. Fan- uh, Fantastic Let Mr. him Fox. finish. No, 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 no. That's all I say. It looks like a flip book. Have you seen Fantastic Mr. Fox? No. It's kind of. I don't. Well. I know we talked yeah, about yeah, it before, yeah. but it's got it's similar that glitch. I know yeah, what you're talking about yeah. like it's it's done on purpose. It's just the animation, it's the, the animation, style. yeah. And I, it looks like literally a, a visualizing a comic book on a bit silver screen. And, yeah, uh, and that's a pretty good. And DC can gravitate to that. That'll be so fucking literally. awesome. That's and you know the DC's. Been, I mean, they do that with the. I finally watched Reign of the Superman. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 and and it was terrible. I'm sorry. I mean, it didn't follow the comic book. So I, I mean, yeah, just okay. like the okay. just like the fucking you know Death of Superman movie didn't follow. But do you the really comic. do you really want the, the what you see to follow the comic book? Yes, because mm. that was man. That's that was amazing. such a great fucking storyline. Mm. The death of Superman and the return of Superman and the funeral for a friend. That whole that's the only DC. That is the only DC set of comics that I ever got into. Mm-hmm. That uh, that I actually liked and read and like you know was a fan of. Mm-hmm. I, I never th- that was it. So yeah, I, honestly, like yeah, yeah I wanted to see when jam? I saw no. Reign of Superman uh, of Superman. I was like, man, I hope this follows. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was cool to see the Eradicator. I mean, it was cool to see like you know they, the way that they did it. But if the storyline would have followed, man, if the storyline would have followed, it would have been really good. I think. Okay, that's cool. That's uh, it's not my forte. I don't well, see. That's what you I don't mind it. Yeah, and that's great. Right that's great. You know, Big but time. It Dude, just, it just makes 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 me <laughs> makes me a. Uh, uh, I, I, <laughs> you you a shout out! Shout out, baby. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes me a little bit more enthused to watch something else. You know, of, you know. It, it, I guess I don't know, man. Teach their own, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, so. Um, in, in that movie, uh, mm-hmm. Haley Steinfeld does the voice of Gwen Stacy, and she was the the lead chick in uh, Bumblebee. Did you watch Bumblebee? No, I've never seen Bumblebee. Uh. It was good. Now the thing that my problem with Bumblebee is is that, and according to Michael Bay, that resets the whole Transformers universe, right? Because it it, it totally redoes the whole storyline. Is Michael Bay still on this? Yeah, I think so. So he he's on the. The, the the first few films and he's gonna reboot the shit himself. Is that yeah, the, I guess so. Michael Bay. Do, oh, okay, yeah, I mean. they did like a solo movie, you know, with Bumblebee and like, yeah, th- because Michael there's Bay, no way wow. it there's no way it ties into the Shia LaBeouf verse. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because like in that universe, like they show Bumblebee being on Earth and like during World War Two, but in this movie, he doesn't show up until like I think it was the eighties or mid early nineties or something like that. I forget the timeline of wow. the movie. See, I, I relate Michael Bay's Ninja Turtles and like the like whatever whoever makes the Fast and Furious, they deserve those people that create those projects deserve a special place in hell. I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> fucking wait a fucking last minute, turn it off a cliff. <laughs> Jesus, I'm just saying like like that was, was a big that down. Of course, I watched the, like the Ninja Turtles because it's Ninja Turtles, but it's like geez, and then now that they're doing this whole Transformers deal. Fucking Michael but the Bay. Transformers that were in Bumblebee were more... They were almost identical to the ones that were in the cartoon show when we okay. were kids. I liked Bumblebee way more okay. than I liked... Maybe Cover I should knock Jones. it until I see it. Okay. You should. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> but the last Michael Bay film was The Rock. I think that was the greatest one. Uh, the last great Michael Bay film. Excuse me. Um, um, but yeah. So uh, I... Uh, Went and saw Captain Marvel last night. Oh, yeah. you must be very proud of yourself. Why you stop flexing that little? Yeah, uh, I want to flex too, but I was just—I'm yeah. kind of in the 
Yeah. So what was the, the ratings? Okay. Uh, maybe not even get to the ratings. What did you think okay. about it, Rob? Even though no spoilers, unless you okay, fuck it. I'm not gonna watch it anytime soon. Spoil the shit. Why out are of you it. gonna watch it? Um, I'm. I saw the trailer. I'm not a big fan of it. And all right, uh, it's just, it's this, not my is, forte. Yeah. this is. I have a kid. I can't make it out spoiler there. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Three, two. One, turn the shit off if you don't want to know anything about this uh, movie. Leave it on. Just lower down the volume. How about that? So, the, I give the movie a solid eight. Maybe an eight and a half. Okay. I have to go see it again to, to pick up some stuff. I was really hesitant on Brie Larson being cast as Captain Marvel. I didn't think she was a strong female lead. Her voice was really throwing me in the, in the, in the trailer. It, it seemed kind of campy, kind of cheesy, the way that they had the trailer. The movie does not come across that way. No, the okay. movie the movie is done super tastefully for a character that a lot of people don't know anything about that aren't you know they're not really familiar with Captain Marvel as a superhero. But Carol Danvers has been a staple in the Marvel universe since she was written. She's been in almost every single storyline, and, and she is one of the most powerful uh, Marvel superheroes. Uh, if you remember back in the day. Uh, watching uh, the X Men animated series. Oh yeah. oh yeah, you know. So Rogue uh, has the ability to absorb uh, other pe- mutants' powers or whatever. You know what I mean? Anybody's powers. So in the comic or in the in the show, you remember she's she has the power of flight. She's invincible. She's super strong. She got all those powers because she absorbed Miss Marvel's power, Campbell, Carol Danvers' powers, and almost killed her. And so those pow- she absorbed all of them. Um, and she's, then they, she's had them ever since. Mm -hmm. So, and then Ms. Carol Danvers, I forget the the exact way, but she regenerates herself as, as comes back as Captain Marvel, not Miss Marvel. (laughs) So, uh, will you pass me that other uh, chocolate stout over there? You. There you go, darling. (laughs) Chocolate stout. Deliciousness is what it is. So the movie, it's, you know, you want to have the action of the character because it's, it's a it's a strong female lead character and let's not get this twisted it was released on international women's day it is in <laughs> totally <laughs> it is totally intended to be a girl power movie and i'm to- as a uh, father of two girls i'm totally okay with that uh, because okay. there ha- there are n- besides wonder woman there are no real strong female lead superheroes super heroines i should say heroine i love that and Wonder Woman is like supposed to be this, you know, she's, I mean, Gal Gadot is beautiful and don't get me wrong. Brie Larson's beautiful also, but like in, 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 who would you pick though? Not movie wise, but, uh, like to bed. Yeah. If I would have one of these young ladies to bed me, (laughs) um, I'd go with Brie Larson because I feel like Gal Gadot would hurt me. Uh, I feel like she's too strong. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I feel like I could handle a night with Bree. I'm, I'm an opposite of that. I, I, I can go for Gil. No problem. So, my <laughs> my review of Captain Marvel, as far as the storyline progresses, <laughs> you know, they had to do an origin story because nobody really knows who she is. Right, right. Okay, so they changed up her origin story to kind of fit it into the Marvel universe. But wasn't Captain Marvel a, a, a guy or no? No. no, no it was always been a girl? It's always been a girl. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I, I thought so, I heard something different. No, um, origin like, before, like, the trademark wars, um, the character Shazam was uh, Mr. Marvel or Marvel or something oh, okay, like okay, that. Okay. Or, or he was Captain Marvel and then... At the same time that Captain Marvel was being by Marvel Comics, and they Marvel Comics obviously won that trademark uh, case. Oh, I see. So, so anyway, yes, there no. is another character named Marvel. Yeah, um, yeah. That, that that name That's kind of stems from. Throw me off. Uh, um, it. So they don't. They kind of hint to that in the movie. Um, so they never actually call her Captain Marvel. So I mean, it's it's. The way that they do the 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 background story is all done in flashback, so you get right to the to the action of the movie right off the bat. She's already got her powers. She's trying to learn how to control them. You know, you're trying to figure out what's going on at the same time. She's trying to figure out what's going on. Um, you know, as you progress through the movie, and you know, you're you're assuming a lot of things that they they set up in the comics. They set up, you know, scrolls are the bad guys or shapeshifters. Uh, the whole Secret Wars comic uh, story arc, 
the scrolls were invading everything. They had impersonated the president. You know, they were inv- they invaded all of the event. They were impersonating different members of the Avengers. Um, you know, nobody you didn't know who to trust. Mm-hmm. And you know, that was a big the the Secret Wars was a huge story arc across every Marvel comic book. Mm-hmm. And the that was a scroll invasion of Earth. And, you know, the scrolls were the bad guys, and they were the ultimate bad guy because they could be anybody, even the good guys. So being that the scrolls were the bad guys in this movie was really interesting to me because I really was like, oh, this is setting up. Maybe they can do Secret Wars at some point. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Which would be super complicated to do. And then I, it was kind of like a pipe dream of mine that, oh, yeah, they'll do Secret Wars at some point. Mm-hmm. But it, it, through the course of this movie... Um, you know, it's got a great cast of characters. Brie Larson, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, uh, what's his name? The plays Phil Coulson, uh, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and, you know, uh, you know what I mean? Name. Yeah. Um, Ben Mendelsohn is in this movie. He was in, uh, um, what do you call it? He was in Star Wars Rogue oh, One. Jude Law, too. Uh, yeah, God. Jude Law's in this movie. Yeah. I mean, it's got a great cast of characters. You know what's funny, though? I mean, interrupt you. That's what I was trying to say earlier. The I don't know their, what their names. The aliens, though, the shapeshifters, the scrolls. Yeah, the scrolls. They kind of remind me of the the orcs and bright for some oh. reason. <laughs> I just kept thinking I about. It. I was laughing, <laughs> and I was like, I, I don't know. I, just I can I can get that because I mean, if you have no context of the scrolls, the scrolls were written back in the early eighties and stuff before before orcs and elves and shit. So they have they do have kind of that weird appearance, but. Mm. The the movie I thought you know wait wait, wait, wait. hold on before orcs and elves what became popular in pop culture. oh popular okay so yeah. I mean as beyond the eighties have been around yeah yeah I mean <laughs> so as but, the yeah. movie progresses I mean it kind of um, it, it explains some things that were kind of you know left out of the Marvel universe uh-huh. and um, it it you know fuck it I'm gonna well, spoil. Well, before you get to more of the spoiling, yeah, yeah, I think it'll be a, 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 a perfect that. opportunity to take a break, refill some beers, and yeah. just uh, follow us on the other side of this break here. Yeah, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. Oh yeah, baby. I need some beer. For you, the listeners of Gentlemen No Class, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free thirty day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Uh, you can go on there and you can get uh, a copy of uh, The Hobbit. Any of the J.R.R. Tolkien books, uh, Lord of the Rings books are on there. Those are great to listen to the car on your commute. Uh, they have great audio commentary, audio tracks in there. It's like uh, a, a longer version of the movie. So, you know, you can go on there, sign up. You get it's free 30 day trial, you know, no risk to you, you know, cancel it if you want. Uh, but it's really a great opportunity to go in there, get you get a free audio book, and you can find all kinds of new and interesting different podcasts, um, you know, all kinds of things like that. So make sure you go to www.audibletrial.com slash gents no class. We'll have it up on our Facebook page. We'll have it up on our website. Uh, I'll even put a blast out on the Twitter. I haven't done that in a while. Uh, so make sure you go, guys. Make sure you guys go check that out. Remember, follow that link: audibletrial.com slash gents no class. That's G E N T S N O C L A S S. Go check that out. In case you get thirsty no. while you're listening to your audio. So, so this podcast would not be possible because we need the drinks to supply us and and, and give us our uh, knowledge. Check out Eureka Heights. Um, it's a brewery over there in the Heights location off of uh, West 18th, 941 West 18th Street. If you have not been there, definitely check them out. They have a crazy amount of brews over there. Um, if you feel a little hoppy and you, and you like something with taste, I definitely recommend Space Train. Um, but right now, we're drinking a whole bunch of Buckle Bunny. Um, there's beers like Wicked Awesome. Um, and if you like the whole cutesy little uh, dolphin logo they have for Mostly Harmless, definitely check that out as well. Um, again, Eureka Heights, they have a whole bunch of events uh, coming up. Uh, they have a crawfish picnic. Um, they have a, um, a open mini golf coming up. So definitely check. Uh, go to EurekaHeightsBrewing.com. And, or I'm sorry, EurekaHeights.com. And uh, you'll be able to check out the events. And Also, they have... Um they just announced today that you know year round you can get Buckle Bunny and Mini Boss and cans on the shelves. 
Um, but they're coming uh, now. They're going to be canning seasonally uh, other brews and rotating them through, like the Mu Caliente. Um, what was the the what's the one with the dolphin logo that looks mostly f- harmless? Mostly harmless, yeah. Yes. So there's a bunch of those that'll be rotating seasonally that you can get canned at the stores. Oh, um, they announced that today. Now. Yeah, they announced that today or yesterday. Awesome, awesome, very cool. Yeah. So go check out Eureka Heights. We're going to be there a lot coming up recently. Uh, yeah, and be sure to check out other podcasts under our, our network, under HC Universal Network, such as Scary Dad. Uh, Dudes yes, and Beer. Yes, yes, yes but, but why? why? And Talking Sound. I'll be yes. on there eventually. You know, Chris is there traveling you go. all the time, and he yeah. keeps asking me to be on our, there. Our own very Rob will be on Talking, talking Sound. Talking Sound, which is talking about... You know, sound, you sound. Know. It's it's really probably, it sounds it's super as nerdy. Fun as it <laughs> fucking sounds. Yeah. yeah. There's there's some great other guys. Uh, Richard Spazoff. They just uh, just oh, yes. the network. Just a new uh, addition to the family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of comedy, psych medium stuff. Um, I, I've dabbled in a little bit. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So you check Good. that out too. I'll check it out. Um, I'm sure I haven't talked to uh, Chris, who's our uh, fearless leader of the HD Universal Network, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure that they'll be uh, all in town. Uh, I'm sure we'll do something for Comic Palooza. Uh, that's going to be a big weekend for for everybody out there. So uh, yeah. be sure to check that out and be uh, stay tuned for uh, more to come from us about Comic Palooza. It's coming up fast, and we've got some uh, pretty big ideas. But you know those guys over there, Comic Palooza. So we'll we'll see if they accept they <laughs> they accepted they, our picture to use for advertising. Yeah. Let's see if they accept yeah. us to uh, actually be there. <laughs> I would call them out like, "Hey, thanks for using our fucking likeliness, yeah. but not accepting us." You know, but that's cool. <laughs> if that happens, if we're, that happens. We're, we're, we're we're pretty sure they're gonna they're gonna. All right, now you're flexing. All right, I want to flex too. <laughs> Don't be a selfish prick. All, all right. right, yeah, flex, flex all you want. All right, flexed over. About fucking time. Hot on. All right, now back to the movie. Yes. So, so the movie sucked. <laughs> Jesus. Well, okay. Before you get to the spoilers, I'm curious. This has been on my mind the whole time. No, it hasn't. But Wonder ahead. Woman or Captain Marvel? Who would I bang? No, who would you, the Ooh. movie? The better movie. Oh, the better movie. Yeah. I have to give it to Wonder Woman just okay, because. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, my it was song. such a good movie. I mean the soundtrack. I mean, th- there were so many good <laughs> highlights of that movie. Uh, it was done really well. It was very true to the comic source material, which is a big stick- stickler point for me. Um, I don't like. I, I know. Um, <laughs> you know they had, they had to adapt Captain Marvel's you know origin story to kind of fit in the MCU and kind of tie some things together uh-huh. uh, to to explain why she hasn't been around while they've been fighting a Chitauri invasion of Earth and Ultron and. You know, all these things they could have really used her for. The movie explains all that. But, you know, going back to the scrolls being the bad guys, you know, they're at war with the Kree. And, and just a, a reference for you, in um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, Ronan the Accuser, the bad guy that's in that movie, is a Kree fanatic. So they talk about he's a Kree fanatic. You know, he's trying to be purist or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Kree have been at war with the scrolls for, you know, a long time. And basically, they've hunted the scrolls into, you know, they, they they claim that the scrolls invade planets and kill everybody. And the scrolls are shapeshifters. They can shapeshift anybody down to their DNA. But they, they can assimilate their memories, but only short term, only recent memories, not long term. So, like, the way you can, they have, you know, technology or whatever. Anyway, so it, the movie, the movie kind of flips you because it it, it, it dumps you in the middle of, you know, Brie Larson, you know, Captain Marvel is unaware of her past. All she remembers is waking up on Hala, which is, you know, the capital of the Kree civilization. And, and, and instantly tra- she has these powers um, and she's training to be a member of Star Force, uh, which is like the, the Kree, you know, paramilitary organization. So they're, they go hunt down scrolls and, you know, it, it, it's... They they kind of give you some background into this war, and you know the movie kind of unfolds as you figure out that you know she was an Earthling that was infused with these powers from something else, and then taken to Kree with no memory, and you know given a you know, blood transfusion to make her more Kree. In the comics, it's it's a little bit more 
complicated than that. She's flying an experimental aircraft and a Cree uh, craft is coming to earth and there's a, you know, uh, an explosion and she's kind of infused with Cree DNA and technology kind of all at the same time that kind of gives her her powers. And so she's like, See, uh, you know, when I saw that in the theaters, I kind of felt like, <laughs> It felt lazy. Just, I mean, like I said, I told you earlier, I don't know social material. Uh, material. I don't, you know, follow the comics. I'm just watching as a just a movie goer. Just, right. I want to watch a story. So just what I got out of that, it just felt like, uh, what's it called? Um, how I thought it was a good way to pull her origin story, which is not that fantastic to begin with. It's not right. that like maybe you, you yeah, know, it's not, not that far. It's not that. You know, huge buildup. I guess you would say. Yeah, or make it- yeah. I mean, in the, in the comics, she's just a test fighter pilot, like yeah. the Green Lantern was in that movie. Oh, you know, okay. you know what I mean. And it's a you know, boom, and then she has these powers and right. she figures That's it out. I, I just, I kind you of know, felt the, like the movie kind of extends it out and makes it a little bit more complicated. Yeah. And I, I thought made it a little bit more believable in the context of what they did because they brought the Tesseract in. You know what I mean? And yeah, that's true. It's just I felt at that moment, it's like, really? That's it? It was like, but then he gets like, well, what the fuck else do you want at the same time? It's like, I don't know. I just wouldn't want to be like, too over the top. I mean, like- I feel like the, the movie did. <laughs> I, I feel the movie was not one of the things that, you know, that you really um, look for in a movie, whether you're conscious about it or not, is mm-hmm. you want the character to want something. You want the main protagonist. What are they after? What is their goal? You know, is it a clear cut goal? You don't want to just throw them into a conflict and not have them and not have the no audience resolution. know what the resolution is at the end of it. We know that we want Carol Danvers to figure out who she was before her memory loss. We want her to become the hero that we all know that she should be. Yeah. So by the end of the movie, you know, they kind of ru- one of the bad the things that I didn't like about the movie is the fact that they turn the scrolls into the good guys. They're like they're the the scrolls are the victims of 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 you know Cree uh, obedient you know they the scrolls refuse to live by Cree law so they've been eradicated because of it so like they're the victims so the whole movie is about you know she got her powers from blowing up this ship uh, and it infused her with you know basically an engine that was powered by the Tesseract the Tesseract wasn't in it but you know she that's where you know, the Tesseract is an Infinity Stone. So she was powered basically by an Infinity Stone, just like the, the Scarlet Witch and the and Quicksilver were. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, she leaves to help the Skrulls find a new home. That's why she's not around. You know what I mean? She's galaxies away. Interesting. So, yeah, I mean... And that's it, why she... Are you talking about towards the end? Yeah. Or, 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 yeah, that's okay. the end of the movie. She's she, that's why she leaves. Uh, yeah, I forgot she leaves because she's fighting other battles and, uh, and no, she's going what, to find them a new home. Oh, that was the whole yeah, point. Right, right. The right, right, whole right, right, point right. was they wanted this faster than light engine so that they could it get out of the like... galaxy. So in the movie, you you don't realize in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that faster than light travel is still not possible. They use these things called jump points, which are basically like wormholes. They right, jump from right. you know they talk about that in Guardians of the Galaxy too when they're jumping to to ego you know we'll go back to the how many jump how many jumps is it you know it's like 92 jumps nobody's ever supposed to do more than six right. you know what <laughs> i mean right. and they're yeah. so they're going through all these jumps and um Hoopla. so like that's how, that's how you have to get around is these jump points um but if you had a faster than light engine you could leave the galaxy and go to another galaxy you know mm-hmm. and and not be pursued by you know the this Cree civilization which is what the scrolls in this movie that's what their goal is um i thought that i thought that the way that they built the storyline up there was i and ne- while i was watching the movie i never had any questions about that didn't make any sense or that didn't make any sense i wish they would have done a couple of things differently i'm mad that they didn't make the, that they made the scrolls good guys cuz now they can't do secret wars um I'm a little upset that um, I'm a little upset that they did this as a period piece in the '90s because I thought it would have worked really well, just kind of maybe post Infinity War. Oh yeah, um, yeah. It, it, I think it could have worked then also. 
What did um, they throw in to, to show the 90s? Was there anything? The oh, first thing that happens is she crashes into a blockbuster video. Yeah. yeah that, I know so, that. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of like. So Lynn Hart worked as a manager at Blockbuster Video while we were in high school <laughs> for a while. And the, the entire scene, he's like, that didn't happen. That's not the way those things were. And never said that. That's not true. <laughs> I'm like, analyzing. they were never crying because yeah. they never rewind. Yeah, baby. And I was, like, I was like, Brian, <laughs> I was like, Brian, I was like, Brian, shut the fuck up. Fees. We don't need to know all the ins and outs of fucking Blockbuster Video upper management and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I do, motherfucker. What he's like, he's like, all right, those were the shelves that we used. I'm like, oh my, what? <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, there was things like Discman and uh, was, certain songs. Was Nirvana and, uh, playing? Yes, yes, no, of course. course. Yeah, they did yes, have they a Nirvana. Did. Oh, yeah, they, they had did. Come As You Are. Yeah. Well, of course, they yeah. Did. So the Losers. whole soundtrack was it was all like... female grunge bands for the most part. Whole garbage. Whole garbage. Uh, doing uh, uh, who else? Was, no doubt. Female. There was no a doubt. there was a big fight scene to a no doubt song, which was pretty cool. Oh, nice. Fucking um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was a lot of uh, you know pay phones and pagers, and it's supposed yeah. to be in 1995. It was kind of nostalgic Definitely. throwback. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I it, thought it was gonna be a little more emphasized, a little bit more. I mean, they did show it, but it wasn't. I mean, that's not what it was about. But I thought it'd be more. Um, you know, have had a lot of more ni- 90s. Uh, I guess um, I don't know what Sing. the word is. But, uh, Nostalgia. Yeah, I guess you would say for like that, I guess production value and stuff yeah. like that. Seeing more stuff. Like, yeah, oh, I was, mean, I, I think that they use like they did what they could. Yeah, they I, did. And and you know, one of my I think things, that's all that's necessary. One of my things, you know, the the scene where like she's chasing the scroll and like it changes, it shape shifts a couple of times during that chase scene on the train. Um, yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like that the chase scene lady. I feel like that chase scene could have been way better if this they made it so that the scrolls have to like stop and like shape shift, you know. But in the comics, oh, like yeah. they can kind of do it on the fly. It's really fluid. And yeah. You know what like I mean? I feel like style. if they could have done yeah. Like I feel like if they would have done well, it like kind of, that, yeah. they could have like, it would have been a way more interesting scene. You know, if the scroll was constantly shape shifting because yeah. You know, the fight scene, you know, she goes on the train looking for this scroll. She's chasing it, and it shapeshifts from a teenage kid into an old lady that she had bumped into. That's how she recognizes it. It's not, yeah. So she sees this old lady, so she, like, starts waylaying on this old lady. But the yeah. old lady's, like, flipping off the ceiling and shit. Yeah. And they're trying to hold her back from beating up this old lady. I'm like... Man, if I'm on that train and this old lady's flipping and doing like she's not just laying down like sums up, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Uh, the passengers mm. on the train were like trying to hold Captain Marvel back at that point. I don't know it, it, that 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 the whole scene was. I mean, it was really good, yeah. but um, I thought that you, you know overall, all in all, as it as it all goes, um, uh, I, I like the movie. I give it a solid eight, maybe even eight and a half. I have to go see it again, but. Uh, okay. It just seems like it locked, lacked a lot of energy for me, man. I don't know. Well, what maybe, it was. maybe you know, I'm, Captain Marvel has always been one of my favorite heroes in the Marvel universe, and I'm so glad that they gave her a movie. I mean, in the comics, she can absorb uh, energy, and it makes her stronger, and then she like radiates it back out. Like if, oh. if, if like for example, like if Storm, oh, fucking, um... if Storm was to like hit her with lightning, yeah. she would just absorb it and like blast it back. Just out. like Doomsday. DC. I'm going DC with this, baby. <laughs> kind of. No, it's just like that. No, Doomsday in the comics was not like that. Um, so you can, I mean. Tomato, tomato. Uh, what, what would you give it, uh, Paul? I don't know, man. I, I, it's, Come on. It's... No. Everybody wants to know what Paul wants to rate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, Everybody, huh? Everybody. Everybody's waiting for me. To, waiting the, for your rating. Yeah, one yellow octagon. Yeah. yeah. Old oh, school rating system, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three pink, pink triangles. Pink rap is annoyed. Let's go. That's with that. not a real shape. I made it up. It's so right. what we got? What, what, what I, I don't know. I'd probably I, 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 fucking like five out of ten. God it's, damn! It, it was low. and it's. I've never uh, rated it, that it wasn't low in a like, comic it was, movie. And I don't know. I, I had to see it again. See, Green Lantern for me was like a six. <laughs> that was too. <laughs> well, that's uh, just Blake because Nelson Blake Lively's was only good. <laughs> Oh, there's two Blakes in there, yeah. Wow, so a five, huh? Okay, well. Yeah, that's just me, man. I'll I, check it out whenever it comes out on the I mean, there was a couple of really good scenes in there that really did it for me. There was like, 
there's a scene where like the whole movie is like Jude Law is like hiding mm-hmm. you know a lot of her origin from her, mm-hmm. and there's a scene at the end where she's like basically like got all of her powers and she's ready to kick everybody's ass. And she's like going against Jude Law. He stands no chance. You know what I mean? No matter what kind of fucking, you know, weapons he has. And he holsters his gun and turns off his deal. And he's like, I told you you're only going to be ready if you can control your emotions and fight me, you know, you know, face to fist to fist, you know, you know, one on one, you know, curl your emotions. And, and she just uses, she just, like Indiana Jones style from like Raiders of the Lost Ark when he pulls out his pistol and shoots the guy as he's <laughs> swiping his sword around. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. She just photon blasts him into the fucking cliffside and, and flies over to him and is like, I don't have anything to prove to you. I mean, it's an ultra girl power moment. Yeah. I get that. But it was still pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, 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 I'll, I'll be honest with you. I really dug the movie. Like, I mean, I get that Disney and Marvel are trying to do you know, little political takes here and there. You know, Black Panther won some Academy Awards as the first comic mo- movie hmm. to be recognized for an Academy Award. I don't, yeah, Whether it deserved it or up, not. Over the top, but yeah. Whether it deserved it or not, that's not us for us to debate. Sure. We're not on the Academy. They voted. Yeah, it's, but, uh, it's you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's, I think that, um, you know, as a father, you know, I think that, it's. Re- I think that it was really great that they made a really good, strong female lead mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, superhero movie. I mean, they did that already, me. though. Wonder Woman. They don't need a Captain Marvel. They did that already. Ripley <laughs> from Alien. There you go. There you go. Alien. Right. <laughs> she's not a superhero. She's sure just she is. a woman. She's, she's still a hero in a to me. In a bot suit. She's still a hero to me. She went. Up, she went against aliens in a constructo bot suit. <laughs> 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 no, no, I'll check it out uh, whenever it comes out. I don't think I'll be able to make the theaters, but uh, that's fine. So eight, eight, that's that's solid. I'll I'm, give it eight. Yeah, you good. know what? I'll I'll average it out since I said between the eight, eight and a half. I'll eight, give it like eight point two five. Yeah, I, Paul's ratings invalid because he doesn't it, know. Fuck you. You said invalid. everybody was waiting for it. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but no, th- th- that doesn't mean that they're weighing in. Yeah, yeah. Right? that means that they're fucking they're weighing in. Yeah, so. Another movie that I saw uh, this past month, you know, I, I've, we've, we've had issues. I've had to stay home with with Corey for, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of days a week. So I've been watching a lot of Netflix and stuff. There's this documentary on uh, Netflix called uh, Abducted in Plain Sight. <laughs> I we were talking up. about this earlier. If you haven't watched it, it's really, really fucked up. It's yeah. It's so fucked up that it's really good. I think we should talk about this on another episode because I really think? want. Yes, I really want to. You want to watch it? Yeah, okay, go watch, watch it. it. We'll, we'll talk about it. that next episode next or something. Episode, yeah. And there's another one called Evil Genius. Have you seen Evil Genius? Mm-mm. Oh, um, what's that one about again? It's about that crazy woman that they kidnap, like the pizza delivery guy, and strap the bomb vest oh, to him yeah. and make him rob the bank. Yeah. That was pretty. And they blow up. up the fucking bomb vest. I yeah. didn't see like. I, I kind of remember that story when it unfolded for real, but I don't remember them actually like detonating the bomb vest. Like, didn't they make a fucking movie with the uh, um, 30, 30 minutes or less is based off of that, I believe. Yeah, one, with with oh, Michael yeah. Sarah and no, yeah. not Mike, Sarah? not Michael no, Sarah. It's, um, it's Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg. And, Jesse Eisenberg. and uh, yeah. uh, what's uh, his Danny name? McBride is in that movie. Yes, isn't it? yeah. Is. And then the other guy from uh, freaking, Aziz uh, Ansari. Aziz Ansari. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Really in that movie? that's yes, based. Yes. Yeah, it's based on that it's based actual on crime. That. Yeah, uh, so that's a really fucked up movie. That lady is fucking. Crazy. So I mean, yeah, fuck. it, is Netflix shifting to like the the number one source for documentaries? Uh, it seems I, like well, it. so here's the thing: number one source for a lot of things. So man. here's here's the thing. This is what I've come to figure out. And no, you haven't. I've been trying to watch a lot of Shut documentaries up. lately. <laughs> um, where's Paul's channel? Where can I mute him? <laughs> Uh, yeah, just go ahead and mute him. Fuck um, you. So, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking cocksucker. That's yes, right. You better put me back on. Uh, you're you still you're, talking. You were only dude. muted in the headphones. You weren't muted oh. in the actual recording. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing that I, you know, I was trying to look like I like watching documentaries. So like I was trying to watch documentaries that were kind of, you know, that would be unbiased to a certain extent. You know what I mean? So uh, like I was looking on Amazon Prime. I was looking on. Um, you know, my Xfinity app or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it dawned on me that like all these companies have vested interests in certain things and they're not going to have 
unbiased documentaries on things because huh. they're going to have lean one way. Netflix doesn't have an affiliation to anybody but its customers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's no advertisements, so they don't yeah. have. Nobody owns a big. I'm sure that there's companies that own big stocks in Netflix, but I mean, as far as like they could do whatever the fuck they want. Is that exactly what that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like they can publish whatever they want. Right. The Skinwalker Ranch shit. Um, yeah. You know, they 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 can. You know, because I was looking for like some really good UFO documentaries and things like that. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's one of the. Um, you have to pay for that, actually. A good UFO documentary. Yeah, a good well, one. Well, I yeah. mean, either way, it seems like Netflix gives you the freedom to uh, to to do. Well, or if you have an idea or something like that, it seems like you have more freedom to do it. They don't really. It's like they said, they're uh, they're so suck, fucking huge. Yeah. We're we're the ones. That um, are the ball, lickers? yeah. Like, if we yeah, created exactly. a documentary and it was good, they, they don't, we could pitch it probably to Netflix, and yeah. they'll probably be the ones that's gonna be like, Yeah, okay, yeah. cool, let's roll with it. You know what I mean? Speaking of that, <laughs> speaking of that, everybody I'm just, gets I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, to backtrack a little bit to Captain Marvel because this God really, uh, really hit me on this, this deal. Let's hear it. The Stan Lee cameo, <laughs> oh, yeah, in Captain Marvel. Oh, okay. which one was that? He's on the train. And he's rehearsing his lines from reading the script. Oh yeah, from Mallrats. Yes. Oh, that's, that's, what he was why, doing. that's why. Uh, that's Kevin what Smith, he was doing. He's got the script of Mallrats, and he's rehearsing his lines that he has for his cameo. I was trying to think Mallrats. about his cameo. I was trying to tell somebody today, but I forgot. Oh, you just got that tweet from Kevin Smith. Uh, yeah, I, I've seen it too. Is that what they're talking about? That's cool. Is it? I saw Kevin Smith yeah. post. Yeah. I knew that he was going to post something because yeah. I saw it last night, and I was like, "Man, now Ke- like." I was like, man, Kevin Smith's got to have a huge heart on for that right now because <laughs> he's filming Jane Silent Bob reboot yeah, right, yeah, now. right now, right yeah. now, uh, and that's just—I mean, that's awesome that's to awesome. have Stan Lee reading the Ma- the Mall Rats fucking script. Re- Talk re- about a piece of pop yeah, culture from man, that was in the nineties and nineties. And oh my god, one of my favorite, the well, cheesiest. What, 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 what Kevin- was the line? Was, he, was the line that he was rehearsing in Mall Rats? Like, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, his his base, you know, his catchphrase, right. something about true believers. Mm-hmm. He kept saying mm-hmm. over again you know what i mean uh but yeah I that's mean, awesome that's awesome it was you know i mean they're the script is up real high in his face with the mall rats logo on it yeah. i mean it, they're not trying to hide it they're trying to make you see that he's reading lines from wow, mall rats that's insane you know what i mean i yeah. bet i guarantee that's like cute. kids that are going to see that movie right now that have like, never seen or heard mall rats will go watch mall rats yeah. because oh, of yeah. that oh, yeah. that's a huge payday for kevin smith oh, huge yeah. payday for kevin smith Is i don't be, think that he knew i think, about I think universal that. still owns that shit out but he still gets a royalty off of every i get the royalty yeah but that's it's insane that's hilarious i mean that's it, awesome. i yeah i, I that's uh and if you're gonna watch a movie and get into Kevin, if you're gonna watch a movie that's gonna lead you into Kevin Smith movies, Mall rats, yeah. it's either Mall Rats or Dogma. One of the two of those. You, is you gonna, a fan of Clerks? That was the first movie, but that's not gonna get you into. His, that's not gonna uh, make you yeah. watch more of them. Nah, nah. I say I Tusk. Like, <laughs> Tusk for sure. Yoga hosers. I mean, that's that's our uh, gentleman no class. That's our go to uh, Kevin Smith <laughs> oh, movie, isn't it? Fuck yeah. you, Tusk man! <laughs> God damn it, Jacob! Fuck movie. you from a long time ago. <laughs> Send me pictures late at night yeah, of fucking whoa, that movie. Of his Tusk. Yes, oh, the tusk, movie yeah. he owned, um, not his dick area. You sick fuck. So, what do you think the next uh, the next uh, uh, sex crave celebrity documentary coming out on on uh, Netflix? Ooh, you think? Ooh, Who's the next one? You think predictions? Uh, predictions? Yeah, what we got? I want to go with. It's not gonna be Harvey Weinstein. Javi Feierstein, Alec Baldwin, <laughs> Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin uh. I think Alec. I Baldwin. think Stephen Baldwin. Alan Alvin. I think Alec Baldwin's going to be the next uh, celebrity scandal. Yeah, yeah, sex scandal. Let me see here. What we got? No, uh, no, 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 no. What, what about what about an old man? How about um... plot twist? Will Smith. <laughs> damn. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Well, it's not old, you know. He's getting there, but I'm thinking real old, like maybe like uh... Martin Scorsese. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking De Niro, up. Uh, Pacino, uh, De Niro, Pacino, fucking uh, Pesci, Pesci yeah, the Irish Red. <laughs> but yeah, I was watching that's some. That's fucked was, up. No, none of those was, guys. Are gonna, they'll be all right. They'll but there right. was some fucking cheesy fuck movie playing. Uh, maybe it was at the DMV the other day, and it had Joe DMV. Piscopo in it. Because you went to the DMV to renew your ID. I did because you're at that age. <laughs> yeah, that's the because the last time I renewed my driver's license, I could do it online, and they wouldn't let so, me do it again. I had to go in to get a new picture. Real ID yeah. act bullshit. Yeah. 
That's you know they happening. Had, you know they have the uh, you, uh, those mega centers where you can just. That's where I went. It's awesome, right? Yeah, yeah I minutes. signed up online. I signed up online. They were like, show up ten minutes early. I showed up ten minutes early. Checked in. Could be sat down. Shit. Played a couple of games of Candy Crush. They called me back. Took my picture. Took my money. I was gone. <laughs> Get the fuck it out. It was nice. Yeah, I did mine like about maybe four years ago that way. And it was like literally like a five, ten minute yeah. process. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah there's one by my house too. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, that's the one I went to. A cooking doll. Yeah. yeah. Easy, cooking doll. Yeah. That's the Huge, one I man. Uh, I went to the one off of like, I don't know where it was. It was like all, it was all 45 south though. I took the beltway to 45 and then went south. Now you're in the hood. Yeah. They don't like your kind over there. No, uh, it was. <laughs> no, it was not. It They're was telling not, you, you lost, lost boy. <laughs> It was not bad <laughs> at all. Yeah, they had uh, something like sixty something desks there that you could go into. It was it was fine. I mean, really, it was it was. I mean, the only thing interesting that happened there was this old Mexican guy was yelling at the janitor lady when she was cleaning the men's bathroom. He kept opening the door. Are you done? I have to piss. <laughs> hey, man. Only thing interesting that, that happened while I was there. That's what happens when you ha- when you down ten beers at the DMV. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I it, was was, it was ten o'clock. Pre- in the morning. It was ten o'clock. It was ten Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I took the day off of work on my birthday, and like, because I knew Ooh. I had to do that. I had to renew my driver's license. Right. It too. expired that day, so yeah. I was like, "Fuck, I've got to do this." Plus, I'm I don't work on my birthday. Like, yeah. well, I, I mean, just, no, yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I know we don't do that out. either. But I did that this year. I was like, "Fuck this! I'm not coming into work. It's my yeah, birthday." That's good. Suck you my fucking you dick. had a job then? I did. Oh, yeah, right, and <laughs> it was very very thin too. <laughs> so, um, I fucking hated it. It's yeah, fucking miserable. You. It's all good. You yeah, um, but you know, guys. On a serious note, if you have not checked this out. Subscribe to our channels. Go to YouTube.com. Um, yeah, no that's class. it. YouTube.com. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no class. Class. Com. Yes. yeah follow us on Twitter yeah. at GNC yeah. Podcast. That's correct. So do us a solid and just subscribe. Write a review. No that would be great. Good, preferably. Uh, yeah, uh, our YouTube channel is going to have a lot of stuff coming up because just Jake's yeah. really don't uh, hold back. Criticize, criticize me especially. I'm a yeah. fucking degenerate. Yeah, yeah. And oh, go no and nuts. check out our Audible trial. You know what I mean? That puts Please. beer in the fridge. Yes, yes. Audible. You're you're, yes. Di- you're directly paying us with a free trial. Yeah, yeah exactly. That'd I mean, we're saying that, but and Eureka Heights puts beer in our fridge. That's Eureka right. Heights also puts beer in the fridge. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which we have, and sooner should or later, we, should we tease we will a little bit of reveal. what's going on? Tease. Tease away, I, sir. We got some good I, things I, coming up. Yeah, we do have some great things coming up, because by the time this episode airs, we'll probably have something, maybe. Maybe something solid. So, coming up, uh, what is this, March now? So, coming up June. June-ish. Be, June-ish. Yeah. Be on the lookout. We will be accepting applications for two-person teams. Uh, for a joint venture of Gentleman No Class host Double Dare double at dares. Eureka Heights. We don't get sued. Yeah, Double Dares <laughs> with a Z. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a drug program. At Eureka Heights. Keep your kids yes. off drugs. Yeah. Yes. Double Dare. All the fun of the 90s TV show without the mess. We've yeah. got some... We've got and some, the shitty host. Yeah, you've got, you've got host Rob Style. Uh, Rob Style. Coming at it. We're, we've got some great... We've actually got uh, some great prizes lined up. Amazingly enough, we've we've been working on this for a while, and it's going to be a a fuck ton of fun. I oh, mean, it's yeah. just going to be. I don't think a that really was a tease. Time. I think it was a full blown announcement. No, I, I I think that. Well, I mean, it'll get yeah. more. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess so. Oh, the fuck. Uh, okay. But, well, fuck it. Fuck no it. class. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Yes. No class. Whatever. We don't do no class. Know, more. You're uh, in the <laughs> you don't do yeah. it without class. Don't do it at all. There you go. Yeah. Getting more sponsors too, by the way, and this and that. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe Gibson could just throw us a line. For well, a you reason. know, if 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 Eureka Heights didn't want us to do this, then Evan should have not canceled our meeting. You know, Mason day. Boogie, <laughs> he's having fun in Mexico right now. So fuck him. <laughs> all right, I'm going to Mexico. <laughs> we love you, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for all that you do. Um, so on that note, guys. Oh, you want, you want me done? to sign us off? Go ahead, sign us off. We're Your point fucking up? done. I was just saying if we're if that was the key to you I, know wrap it up. I'm sure. I'm okay with that. Okay. You know, you, you're gonna pull the shit off the yeah. table. Yeah, he looks like you're about done. Jacob usually does this, but you know with this. And on and. that note. Oh, uh, harmonize that shit. Harmonize that shit. I, and well, whenever the, the new rule is, if you jinx something, you got to harmonize. So, all right, you ready? You got to take the lows or the highs. Come on, you got to harmonize. You Mystery. jinxed it. I mean, Mystery. once you jinx each other, harmonize. Mystery, baby. What are we doing? And? And? Yeah, and. and. and.
Ryan. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> On that note. Several notes. Yes. This has been Gentleman No Class. I'm Rob. I'm Paul. And I'm Jake. Take care. Good night. Peace. Yeah. <sighs>